So the key takeaway here is don't panic. What you're observing in markets over the last couple of weeks is not fundamental. It is absolutely liquidity driven by people who have leverage, had no business being in these markets in the first place and are incapable of holding the assets. They are going to transfer large amounts of wealth to what we call hard money investors, people who have real money who can hold things for five years instead of talking about holding things for five years. Good day. I am Hamilton van Bredaar. I work at Prudential Investment Managers. And with me today, I've got Mark Beckenstrater from m and Investments. He's the lead portfolio manager on our Prudential Global Fund range, the multi-asset and equity funds. And today he's gonna to give us some insight into the global meltdown of virtually all asset classes. So Mark, we've seen the pandemic, we've seen a rapid move in, in oil price. And at a high level, can you perhaps give us an overview of what you've been experiencing over the last month in the global markets and how this compares to the, the previous meltdown or crisis in 2008, 1987, 1998, 2008 and nine. Uh, just your thoughts on this. First of all, Hamilton, it's fantastic to be here. Um, we, this is gonna go down in history as the comments we make today measured in five years time relative to the panic in markets. I mean, we were really scared in 2008. We thought the financial system was going to break in 2008. And it's interesting to observe the last week versus the last month of price action in, in the stock market. The last week of price action is totally chaotic. If anybody tells you that the price action today is to do with the fundamentals of the virus and supply chains and globalization, I would posit that that's not correct. Um, what we are observing today is absolute liquidation of people who are being forced to liquidate. The people who rent investment returns, so the leveraged players who rent investment returns for a living, are going to donate large amounts of wealth to what are called real money accounts. People who have real money who are not leveraged, who can hold their equities or hold their, hold their government bonds um, through these type of events. And one should be very careful here as investors or as, um, as IFAs advising in investors of making heroic uh, forecasts of why ABC asset has gone down or up. Most of what's going on in markets is pure fear and pure liquidation. And those people who are forced liquidators of assets here are going to regret it in, in, in five years time. There are astoundingly good, high quality assets. And I will give you one example, Berkshire Hathaway. Berkshire Hathaway has got a market cap today of approximately four, 400 billion. It's got 125 billion of cash and it's trading at a price to book of one. That company is not about to go bankrupt and you're being offered an astounding opportunity to buy those assets. Unfortunately, over the next couple of days, weeks, months, if you are a leveraged player, well, you might not get to carry on holding those assets. But for real money accounts, um, what, you, what you mustn't do here is sell assets and panic. So Mark, what, what do you think will be the immediate and then longer term impact of this pandemic on equity and bond markets and different companies and sectors in particular? So the long term impact at a sort of index level for equities, I think is minimal. In fact, I'm pretty convinced it's minimal. I'm pretty convinced in five years time, if we look at global world GDP, the number will be higher than it is today. And this will be a terrible experience in the memory of people, but the GDP effect will fade and uh, the world will go back to what it's always been doing. So very, very comfortable with that, uh, with, with, with that, with that analysis. And the bond market. So you've spoken about equity. So, so depending on, the, on, on, on depending on the type of bonds, um, it's very interesting to observe. So things like South African bonds that are a, a risky asset are offering one outstanding opportunities. If you buy the long end of the bond market in South Africa today, you'll get about twelve and a half to thirteen percent return when inflation is about four. That's a very very high real return. So you're getting about nine percent real return out of owning those assets. Very happy over five years, I'm going to do well. 
the, what's going on in South African bond market today is not some funny thing suddenly about South Africa's ability to to, to get itself out of its low GDP environment. It is a risk off world where people have to liquidate assets and they're liquidating South African assets because they, 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 they can and they're liquid and they get them out of uh, other unliquidatable positions. In terms of global bond markets, um, I would still believe that inflation as the key driver of bond markets is actually under control globally. And it's very interesting, we're starting to do helicopter money in MMT, so this might be uh, more dangerous to say, but, I would, uh, but my starting position is that inflation is still under control globally, which means that bond markets, um, that some bond markets in the world are still not offering one great returns. And, and, and the last week has been amazing. These so-called safety assets, or no longer act like safety assets. So they give you a negative real return and they don't act like safety assets anymore. Well, you might not want to own so many, so much of them going forward. So market seems like equity markets have, have really fallen across the board. In fact, all asset classes, there's been nowhere to hide. Unlike in 2008, where you, you got a little bit of protection from, from gold. Um, just your, your thoughts and the insights on this. So risk parity players and long short equity players are in interesting situations. They own all sorts of assets which are uncorrelated with equities because they go up when equities go down. And over the last week or two, those assets have stopped doing that. They're not playing their insurance game. So the gold price is falling in a chaotic market. That, that talks a bit to the position of those players. And so that tells me this is not really fundamental. This is a liquidation caused by your bank that's giving you leverage or your risk manager that's watching risk is tapping you on the shoulder and said, um, margin call, I need, you to send me, I need you to send me some money. Or in the risk manager is saying, I need you to cut risk. So they are forcing you today to sell assets that you shouldn't sell. And so those players have been forced to unwind a lot of their insurance trades. And that's why we get chaotic market action. So the big question on everybody's minds right now and I'm really talking about investors and advisors, is that what are you thinking about asset allocation in the portfolios in the current environment? And where are the real big opportunities, Mark? So the, the, the best opportunities for, for people with decent time horizons. And you have to understand that most of the industry doesn't have decent time horizons because the structure of the industry doesn't allow you to say, I'm going to buy this company today and I'm going to hold it for, I'm going to buy Standard Bank, for example, today, and I'm going to hold it for the next five years, and I'm not going to look at the share price. They don't allow you to do that because the industry is not set up that way. Everybody sends out daily positions or daily NAVs or daily performance numbers. And so people cannot think clearly about what they should be doing. And Warren Buffett is not going to be suffering from this problem. So the most important thing um, for people to do is not to panic. You can cause massive damage to your own wealth here by panicking and selling all your equities or all your bonds and running to cash and saying, I want to go and sit in US dollar cash and I'm going to wait for all the problems to go away and then I'm going to reinvest it. Well, I would uh, suggest that at the point you try to reinvest it, things might be to 20 to 30 to 40 percent higher than they are today. So you can damage your clients' portfolios really badly here by trying to trade out of risky assets into uh, so-called riskless assets. The, there are very big opportunities, particularly for those, who, for those who have cash or have other assets that are liquid that they can sell to buy the outstanding opportunities. I would suggest that given some of the real economic damage that is going to happen to airlines, hotel industries, etc., etc., that one should um, not play the relative game here, one should play the absolute game. Go and purchase the things that have good balance sheets, where a couple of quarters of bad cash flows don't damage the business and you don't end up actually being liquidated or in chapter 11. And I suggest you, I, I suspect you will do very well out of those, those type of assets. So if you have no cash, of course, it's a little bit harder. You're gonna to have to sell some bonds somewhere to go and buy some equities, or you're gonna to have to sell some equities that uh, have done uh, very well relative to buy some others. Just, just um, in a statistician's term, don't go and play in the tails of the distribution. There are companies here that will go bankrupt because this is a very big hit to the sort of global service economy. 
um, and those companies probably end up owned by governments. Airlines are going to have to get bailed out. How does that eventually work? Will we bail the banks out? Why not bail the airlines out? I, I would suggest it's a good idea, but as an airline shareholder, that, that might not turn out to be the best investment. Um, but um, but other, other, other assets that don't have very much to do with what's going on there, and I'll, I'll give a throwaway now in name, company like a Rio Tinto, which, yes, there's a Chinese slowdown, yes, there's going to be a steel slowdown, the iron ore price might be too high, but there's hardly any debt on Rio Tinto's balance sheet, and it's got huge amounts of cash flow, it will survive this, it's very unlikely that it's going to get into trouble, so you're safe to buy those type of assets, and uh, I'm pretty sure you'll beat global cash over the next five years. So Mark, you, you spoke about Warren Buffett earlier, and he, he's got this lovely line, be greedy when others are fearful and fearful when others are greedy. Is it time to be greedy right now? Well, we, 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 as you know, we've never seen VIX, so the volatility index, this high. So the world is now the most fearful it's ever been in sort of measured history. It's more fearful than it was in the 2008 financial crisis. And I find that quite surprising because I think this crisis is easier to understand the cause, what's happening, what the economic damage is versus in global financial crisis, we just didn't actually know if anybody, anybody was going to pay us back. Um, so you have absolute fear in markets and there's opportunity in, 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 in absolute fear. We have to leave investors and advisors with some, with a, with a thought. What should they be doing right now, Mark? The most important thing to do is not to panic. Don't, the human race lives under this illusion of control of its own life. And you, you, are, you, you are forced to think, I must do something about this problem. You know, I'm observing my portfolio falling every single day with these crazy moves. And I say, I, I must do something now to protect myself or my clients. And I suspect that uh, what you do here can massively hurt them in, in the long run. Because if you liquidate people's assets here and put them in cash, and th those markets come back, which I, sus I suspect that they will because the underlying real economics is not damaged on a 20-year view. So if the people don't need the money tomorrow, liquidating them out so that they feel better and you feel better, is probably not uh, the correct response. Mark, we'd like to thank you for your insight into effectively this, this global meltdown and may continue. I'd like to thank you for your, for your time and for your listening to us today. If you have any further questions on any of our global funds, please do contact your financial advisor or contact our client services um, center. Thank you very much.